All right, you guys, I'm back, and I just recorded a video, posted on YouTube, I made a Facebook account, I did a bunch of stuff today, so pardon my unprofessional demeanor. Um, this is my friend Jenny's shirt. Yeah, Jenny Tilby, you should look her up, she's a great artist. She has a children's book, it's fantastic. Anyway, so I wanted to talk to you guys about some cool resources out there for you and your piano and properly taken care of, and um, ideas for regulating different things like that, like how often do you need to tune it, how often do you need to regulate it, where should I put it in my house, all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, here we go. The first book that I want to point out is this. This is How to Buy a Good Piano, sorry, Used Piano. And it is by Williard M. Leverett, RPT. RPT means Registered Piano Technician, and that means that he is registered by the Piano Technicians Guild. Um, you have to take a really hard test to get to, to become a Registered Piano Technician. It means they know what they're talking about when, when they have that title. If you're going to get your piano tuned, look for a registered piano technician. Unless, of course, you're going to use me, then don't look for that until I pass. Then you can start looking for it. But I'm still kind of, you know, new at this point. Still got to take it. It should be six months, and I'm going to apply and take it. Anyway, how to use a good, or how to buy a good used piano is a really good resource. It is really thin. Um, you open it up, and it's got images. They're in black and white. It's got a lot of text. Um, it's got definitions of terms. It points out different things, things that you should look for when you're getting a new piano. Here's a good one. Um, so these are the pins. They fit in the pin block. You can see them right there on my piano, where my finger is pointing. That's where the strings attach to. Um, you can see the strings go, there's some splice, it's what they call splice strings there. Um, that means that the, the strings aren't as new as one would hope and, you know, it's just really good ideas, really good tips, tells you how valuable different sorts of things are on the piano, like these, these splices. I can read you an excerpt. It says, quote, looking closely at the strings near the tuning pin area, if you see any splices, knots in the wire, the metal may be fatigued, this, and string breakage during tuning may be a problem. So, really good information is really focused on the consumer buying the piano and how you guys can get the best deal. Um, you can you can always find pianos on Craigslist or different resources like that. It's a really good idea to get a technician out there to look at it. It's really cheap, like 50, 100 bucks. But I mean, if you're gonna buy a thousand dollar piano, might as well throw an extra 100 bucks because if you get that piano and something's wrong or something's unfixable, then you could have some serious problems on your hand. You could be out a thousand dollars. It's a really good option and I highly advise it. I also know that a lot of technicians can get pianos for really cheap. Um, I happen to know one technician who said that he bought a piano right before taking this class that I am, the Randy Potter School of Piano Technology, yeah. and he said that he would not pay half of what he paid um, for his piano because you can find them for really good deals, you know? doesn't mean the piano is bad, it just means that some dealers charge more, some locations charge more, that there are pianos out there for budget concerned consumers. So that is really good. And this book, again, is a really good idea for you to, to, to get. It's eleven ninety five. Um, you You can get it, you can look through, go to Craigslist, find a couple pianos, Go to their house and look at the piano. If you like it, call a te technician and get it. And that way, it really helps narrow down, keeps the cost low for you because the technician doesn't have to look at 20 different pianos. You know, it's, it's a good idea. So anyway, it goes through 
a lot of different information like the felt of a moth eaten, you know, how to how to clean your piano. Although it's recommended that that's done by a tuning professional, a technician. Um, talks about spit, um, split bridges. Here's a good image with water damage on the piano. I mean, every page has pictures on it. You know, it's 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 fantastic resource. Highly recommend it. I've read it twice. And, you know, I am going to actually film myself doing a, a complete inspection on this for school, um, just for my references as, as far as, you know, I'm practicing doing this so that when I get to, to a client's home or something that I can do this. Um, and a lot of these techniques are what's called a, a pre-tuning inspection, which every technician will do when they come to your house if they're a good technician. And that gets them familiar with your piano. They know the problems. They can recommend how to make your piano better and everything like that. So anyway, it's a great resource. Highly recommend it. Um, I want to take a second and show you one of our really cool resources, a piano technician. This isn't really something that you guys would want to buy, but it's something that we have. It's really cool. This is the Pierce Piano Atlas. Uh, this is the 12th edition, 61st year. So basically what you do is you can open it up and it's got thousands of piano brands in it. I can look up any piano brand in there and then look up serial number and find exactly how old a piano is. So for example, I'm going to do this piano right now. This piano is named here, PA Stark Piano Company, and here's... And this is usually where the serial number is going to be. So I'm going to look up Stark Piano Company, P R S S C S C H. Steinway. There we go. Stark, Pennsylvania, established 1891. It's got a bunch of information about the company. Let's see this. Serial number 115071. So we're going to look that up. Uh, 114 and 115. Okay, so this piano was made in 1983. That gives me the quality of the piano, the age of the piano, how well the piano is going to hold its tuning, how old the parts are probably, um, different problems that are going to be wrong with the piano, all kinds of information come to me from this book. So, knowing the serial number, knowing the, knowing the brand is, is really helpful for us you know, when you guys call us and say, hey, I have a piano, as a sticky key, and I'd like you to come and tune it and fix the sticky key. The serial number is whatever, and the model is whatever. You know, Steinway 119715385797, I don't know, squared. But that will tell you, or tell us, the kind of problems it's going to have, the kind of style it is. Uh, it allows us to look over our manuals before we come and make sure that we really have the information for the piano fresh in our memory. Um, some piano companies are different, and since there's thousands, literally thousands of piano companies out there, not to mention different types of piano, grand piano, spinet, co um, the console pianos, regular up uprights like this, it really helps us to understand what piano that is and helps us be prepared to come and tune and get in and get out of your hair, so to speak. Um, another really cool resource that we have is this. This is the Apprentice Training Manual. This is something I got with my course. Um, it's not necessarily a study guide for the, for the registered piano technician test. However, if you know all the stuff in this book, then you're ready to take a test. And I just want to give you guys a taste. So you know that how qualified we are as uh, registered piano technicians versus just some guy with a tuning fork. Um, let's show. Okay, so these are all the skills that we have to check. 
they, these are the skills. This is when we first learn the skill, and this is signed off by a registered piano technician saying that we have mastered this to the point where we could do it on our own with no supervision. And this is actually inspired by uh, Randy Potter, who was a police officer before he became a piano tuner. Um, and he, he used his police officer training book as a guide for this, for all the skills that they have to have. So it's really organized, lets us know exactly what we're looking for, exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Just really good. It's, it's a great resource for us. Um, anyway, so every page is like this. Every page is full of skills. And I don't know how many pages there are. 20, 35, 39, 40. There's 40 pages of information, all packed with that. Um, you know, I, I can read you a couple little things. So, remove and replace an action, or an upright action. Remove and replace a console action. Remove and replace modern style of Somer or Pratt or Reed. Drop action style, which is also spin it, they're short pianos. Um, removing and replacing a birdcage over damper action. So some of them are kind of like, oh, you just have to remove the action. But there are proper ways to do it, ways that won't damage the action, ways that won't damage the parts of the action, ways that we can get them back in without denting your piano. It is actually really important to know. So great resource, um, fantastic for us to know, and lets you know that we're qualified. The last and probably the best resource that I could recommend as a piano technician to you is this book. It's called The Piano, A Piano Technician's Guide to for the Piano Owner. Fifth edition by Philip, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, G-U-R-L-I-K, Gerlich. I guess I did try. He's also an RPT. It's a great book. I can get this book for you. Um, the, the price on this book is $3.95, so four bucks. I can get this book for you. And it's basically everything that a piano technician wants to tell you, but doesn't have time to tell you. So when you go into their house, or when they go into your house and they start tuning the piano, and you're like, hey, what's this? What's this? What is this doing? Is this in good condition? You know, it's like all of those questions answered. How a piano works, caring for the piano, um, what, is the, what the piano owner can do to, to care for their pianos. Uh, humidity control systems, which, by the way, are the best thing that you can install in your piano to take care of it. Other than getting your piano regularly serviced and tuned, a humidity control system, top of the line, is going to increase the life of your piano incredibly. Keep it from drying out, keep parts from swelling, um, the felts from swelling, the keys from swelling or warping. It's going to keep your pin block in good condition, keep your strings from rusting. I mean, so much maintenance is avoided by using this humidifier. The tuning is going to stay in tune, in tune longer. It's going to hold longer, so you don't necessarily have to call your piano tuner as much, which, good for you, bad for me. <laughs> but it is really good to take care of your piano, and that's why we're here, is to make sure that you guys get the best care for your piano as possible. Um, talks about tuning the piano. A little bit of theory, if I remember right, goes into it. Yeah, a little bit of theory. Um, talks about different types of pianos, reconditioning, building, restoring. Um, and, uh, just a bunch of cool stuff. Piano technician, there's a whole section on that. Talks about why it's good to um, to to do the PTG test, why it's good to look for those re um, registered piano technicians, um, what the piano technicians kind of expect when they show up to your house. Like, they don't want distractions, they don't want TVs on in the same room kind of thing. Um, it's important when we're tuning to have the atmosphere really quiet so we can hear what's going on, you know. So, great resource, fantastic. I think everyone with a piano should own a humidifier system and one of these books. Um, I'm actually going to buy a bunch and keep them with me in case piano owners want to buy them when I come to tune. I, it's honestly a great book. Um, 
Anyway, so let's talk more about what you can do to take care of your piano without having to read these books. So humidifying is really good. Like I said, prevents felts from swelling. Let me grab my action part and I'll show you. So this is a piano action for an upright piano. As you can see, we have a key here. It's pretty cool. It pushes down on the key. This balance rail, this part comes up, moves this called the whipping, pushes that up, hammer comes and hits the string at the same time. The damper is letting off the string and allowing the string to ring out. Also, when you push down, notice <laughs> I have to use both hands to get my leg up here. Notice that this comes off. It ejects and allows the hammer and the damper to stay open just like that. See how it kind of that it pushes up and then pops off. See? Like that. Anyway, so all of these felts, there's felt here, felt here, felt here, felt here, down here, in here, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's a leather piece, there's felt here, felt under here, inside here, felt here, and inside here, and my piano key just came off. Anyway, um, tons of felt, all of these wood pieces have a tendency to swell up with the humidity change. Um, they, they swell up with the humidity and then when it dries out, usually in the summer when it dries out, it shrinks back down. And that's kind of normal piano wear. But having your piano close to, um, what are those things called? Swamp coolers and open windows, open doors, um, in the, uh, by the bathrooms where the humidity from your shower is going to come. Those kind of things can add to the stress of your pianos. Bad news, you know, it, it's going to really wear on the life of your piano. There are also other parts, like down here in my piano, it's called the soundboard. That's a great big piece of wood, and there are two uh, bridges that sit on like this, and then the pin block up here, the strings come across, attached to the bridge, and then attached to the bottom. And that, when the strings vibrate, it pushes on the bridge, which makes this big soundboard, which is actually, let's see, the entire size of the piano here. And I think it probably goes up to right there. And and the the soundboard is, is what moves and allows the string to make the noise. Um, when the humidity comes, it bends it and cracks it, pulls it apart. Just bad news, you know, really don't want that kind of stuff hanging around your piano, humidity. So the good things that you can do, best thing is a humidity control system in your piano. That's going to keep it right around 41% humidity, and that's, that's optimal for, for your piano. Um, I would highly recommend them. I'm not quite sure what they cost now. I think it's probably like five, six hundred dollars to get it installed for a uh, from a piano technician. Uh, by the way, a glass of water sitting in the bottom of your piano doesn't work. It just doesn't humidify, and if it does, it makes it too humid, and it mostly attracts spiders and moths and rats, and those kind of things will eat your felt, and then. You just won't have felt to swell up in the humidity. So I guess it solves one of your problems while giving you another one. Um, so if you don't want to spend the $500, which honestly, you know, you already spent a lot on your piano, especially, you know, if you're going like Baldwin Steinway, you're really getting up in price there. Install a humidity system. It's not that much money. But if you're trying to budget, just don't have enough, Maybe you just want to have your piano for 10 years and then you want to get a really nice one. Things that you can do to control. Don't have it near open windows. Don't let it have direct sunshine on it. The sunshine will dry the, the wood out a lot. Uh, the open windows will let the, the cool air and the warm air during the day and cooled at night. Uh, that will, will really do a number on the piano and damage it. Um, the, let's see what else. 
air registers are really bad for for pianos. You know, if you have like a heating duct in the floor or an AC over the top, it's going to fluctuate the temperature and the temperature is going to expand and contract the metal parts and the wood parts and that they could fracture and break. It'll, it'll wear the strings down more and you might have a string break and those are really expensive to fix. Um, let's see, you know, doors, outside doors are really bad. It's generally a good idea to keep it on an inside wall. So, for example, if this is your house, your floor plan, you don't want your piano here, or here, or here, or here. You want it somewhere inside here, protected from the weather, from the sun that's shining on that wall and heating up that wall. That's where the heat is getting into your house, um, the snow kind of thing, you know. Um, when I was living in my apartment in Provo, I had the door right here going in, and my piano was right there, literally, like right there. There was a hall that went down this way, and there was a bathroom there. Piano didn't survive very long. It was only a $100 piano from Craigslist. It was in really bad condition, and I wasn't concerned about it. I wasn't planning on fixing it or getting it repaired, but... It went out of tune really quick, and it just, the parts didn't work very well. By the time I was done using it, after, well, uh, I can't remember how long I had that piano for, maybe, maybe a year. Um, keys were starting to stick and be sluggish and, and feel thick. Um, that's because the felt inside here were, were swelling, and it was being harder to push it down and pull it back up. Same thing for the felts in here and the balance rail. So, good idea, don't keep them in their doors, vents, ACs, bathrooms, uh, windows. Try to keep it away from there. Uh, another good thing, don't put water or plants on your piano. It could spill. That spells disaster. Um, that's really all I can think of right now as far as, as temperature and humidity. Um, pretty pretty much covers it. If you follow those rules, you're going to be pretty good. Your piano is going to last a while. Um, for example, I just bought a new piano. It was 4500 I think. It's a really, really nice Kauai piano. It's in great condition. I'm going to get a humidifier system when I go back to Arizona. Um, but it's sitting kind of on an outside wall, which I don't really have control over right now because it's not in my house. Um, no, no offense, John. It's okay. I love you. But I would, I would probably move that. <laughs> you know, it's, some, it's something that you really want to take care of because it's a nice instrument. You spent a lot of money on it. Putting a little bit more into upkeep is going to prevent a lot of problems later on. Even if I am the technician, I mean, I, I'm still going to spend a lot of time replacing parts. And, and doing all the maintenance and repair and regulation and tuning and it's, it's just going to be a nightmare if I don't move it away from that wall, especially in Phoenix where I mean, it can go from 30 degrees at night in the winter to 120 degrees during the day in the summer and you know those kind of changes really have are really hard on the piano. So I think that's all I have to tell you. I can't think of anything else that I was going to mention. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you really liked my upright model. It's a great piece. It's really cool to, to look at and understand how, how it works. I usually am going to bring this on sales calls. Uh, keep it in my trunk because it's a really nice way to explain, like, Oh, right here you have this uh, shaft that's damaged and cracked, and I need to replace those. It helps you understand, as a piano owner, you know, what's going on. And just really good. It's kind of fun to play with. I don't think I've shown this to anyone who hasn't grabbed it and played with it, uh, including my dad. So everyone finds it interesting. It's really cool to look at, even if you don't play with it for very long. Um, yeah, so 
again, those books, really helpful. And if you're considering, like, training your kids um, or getting your kids involved in piano lessons, the, the number one reason why students drop out of piano is because their instruments are inadequate for their needs. They're not as good as the as the, the teacher's pianos, and they feel like they're not performing correctly at home. It makes them really frustrated. Parents get frustrated. You know, they're used to playing on a, a subpar piano, and then they go and play on a really nice piano, and the keys don't stick, or they're not anticipating different things, or they can't play as fast on the new piano. Sometimes the keys are a little thicker, like my my piano back in Provo had no felts on the keys, and so it was told, like really loose. Um, I also had a neighbor who had the same situation that I practiced on for a long time. Um, so, you know, those kind of things can be really discouraging to beginning students, to you, to your kids, to whatever, Aunt Jemima. Just, you know, make sure your piano is in good condition and upkeep regularly, you know, tune it regularly. It's supposed to be tuned every year or every six months, preferably. Um, but if you do that, it's going to provide you a lifetime of enjoyment. You're going to be able to pass your piano on to your kids and your kids' kids and your kids' 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 kids. kids, kids. I got a piano on Craigslist. It was a Steinway. It was from 1873. Yeah, 1873. Um, there were a couple problems with it. It would cost a bit to to put it back in working condition, uh, which was really unfortunate. But like the uh, the, the soundboard was cracked. Um, had a lot of things that would just need the piano to be completely taken apart. Really expensive to fix. Things that. I don't really want to spend time doing on a piano for free, but that kind of example is like if it had a humidity system in it, I doubt that that board would have been cracked. You know, it, it wasn't as well taken care of as it should have been, um, but I mean, pianos can last hundreds of years, you know, um, if they're well taken care of and maintained. And, everything just like a car you know you you take your car to be serviced or you hear that little clicking or that something in your car you take it in and they're like oh your serpentine belt whatever and you fix the serpentine belt and that prevents something like the engine falling out of your car or whatever happens when you don't fix a serpentine belt I don't know cars but <laughs> you get the idea so anyway that's my final pl plug for keeping your pianos regulated and, and tuned. Uh, make sure you take care of your piano and it will take care of you. So uh, that's all for this video. Stay tuned for more. I will probably have a couple lessons on playing piano, on, um, I don't know, whatever else pops into my mind. I have tests to take in tuning. Uh, I have to send them to my teacher. Randy Potter, so I'm going to post those here too, and um, they won't be super informative to you, but it'll be kind of fun for you guys to, to look at and see how a piano's tuned and how it's done and, you know, how we tune by ear, which I will be doing, and, and tuning the instrument to itself in octaves and octaves, and teach you a little bit about beats and when, uh, not like, but like, Hertz beats the wavelengths and when it's out of tune. It's more on that in another video. Um, anyway, stay tuned. There'll be more cool stuff. I'm going to have drawings. I'm going to have quiz and trivia like the world's oldest piano today or different kinds of cool pianos. There was one that I saw that had like a, a full on oil painting underneath the lid of the grand piano. Awesome piano. So I'll post pictures of that, slide shows different kinds of things like that, cool piano music, um, yeah, so stay tuned, you'll like it, subscribe, like, and comment, tell me if there's something you want to see, something you have questions about, be happy to explain it, 
So take care, and I don't have a good tagline right now, so peace.